Welcome, Grapple fans, for the very last time. Saying goodbye is always sad, but today's sadness is eased a lot by being able to turn back the pages of wrestling's 33-year history on ITV and enjoy again some of the all-time greats. None greater, in my opinion, than the fabulous George Kidd. More of him later. Remember Odd Job, the great Togo? Wrestling fans knew him before James Bond. Well, today we can offer you the outrageous Adrian Street. Les Kellett, the tough guy who never failed to make us all laugh. Billy Two Rivers, the greatest Red Indian ring warrior of them all. Those were the days of spectacular bills at the Albert Hall. Royal patronage, you notice, with McManus and Palo in their heyday. And the best seats costing a princely ten guineas. Ricky Starr will parade his unique talents for us later. But notice further down the bill, a heavyweight scrap featuring a rising star who really did reach the top of the pile. The late, great Mike Marino. The man who taught me so much about the ins and outs of the game. Let's enjoy him now as he faces John Kowalski from Portsmouth. Second wave, round four. Round four, three to go. John Kowalski, a good former amateur wrestler at heavyweight, now turning out a crispy, pretty useful pro, but against Marino, a lot of troubles in store for him. Three rounds to go, one fall decides the bout. Marino in the black trunks. And the wrong end of the attack at the moment. They are on the deck. <laughs> just in case you've just joined us recently, Marino getting away over three stone. It is three and a half stone here and four and a half inches in height. So he's got few problems. Backbreaker over the shoulder, but he doesn't allow it to stay. Didn't even take the double arm. Nicely taken by Marino on the folding cross on the way back from the ropes. He could hold it, and he's got it. So Marino still triumphs in the end against the big strength of the Waterlooville man, John Kowalski. Marino the winner, one four necessary in round four. Johnny Quango's trademark was his famous headbutt. Dangerous when roused, you might say. And he certainly was by Bobby Barnes, who began with his usual peacock-style display. Weight-wise, three pounds in it in this heavy middleweight fight. Oh, a new style um, wrestling gear here. If you've seen these shoulder straps before, but never with that front to the trunks. This is something else. Well, if you... If just talk amongst yourselves at home there for about a quarter of an hour and Bobby Love uh, uh, folded his gown and we can get ahead with the first round of this one. <laughs> this is Johnny Crango's corner. Just a little ground off of the whole thing. Could, could we start the bout pretty soon? snazzy pair of trunks though completely different to the last and Barnes will have to let go he's been told to break and Gillette ooh Gillette's the old really getting into the thick of things here all Barnes needs to do is to swipe the referee it's his lock Across the throats. And there you go, one, 
too many. He <sighs> really lined that one up. Still, he pulled it. And there's the back. Seconds left in the bar. And there's the bat to finish it. Now, will he get back in time? But it was an illegal move, so he's not getting counted. And the bell will save any further trouble, so he's got to end as a draw now. Yes, at one fall each draw. Bobby Barnes tagged as the Hells Angels with Adrian Street. A Welshman whose line in hair and eye makeup and glitzy gowns was really something else. He didn't have a lot of ice with his opponent here, Mick McMichael. Finally gets round to his pep talk. He was really laughing this night. You won't like that. <laughs> Tony Mansoli laughing away there as he tries to gather up this down which is torn to ribbons. And Adrian Street fuming man. All the trouble when you're that beautiful guy. There's the lady with half the gown over her head. The makeup's still there, but at the end of six rounds it may not be. This is a catch weight contest. He's giving away a lot of weights. This afternoon to uh, 11 stone 10, he is to 13 stone 2, Mick McMichael. <laughs> tried to switch posting, another butt to the head. Double leg grab, now over for a Boston, no, the posting again. Still the posting, no attempts. This time through the too high for him and over the top of the flying tackle from the ropes and a neat cross press. And that's got him. One of the few wrestling holes we've seen Street produce recently. And that's the one that gets him the winner in round six. Rather like my old pal, Mr. Scotland, Ian Campbell, of course, here. Big Bruno Ellrington was a 20-stone chunk of Portsmouth rock, and in the bout we see now, he had a four-stone weight advantage over the great Hungarian favorite, Tibor Zakas. Round five. five. Zakas in the trunks against Ellrington. Trailing by that one submission. This is the penultimate round, so if Zakas is going to come back, he must try and do it in this round with the equalizer giving him a chance for the winner in the final round, but if that goes on, it's ridiculous. A big warning for it. Right into the ropes, he's hanging on the middle rope. There's no chance of continuing the move there. He shouldn't be allowed to. Yes, he can. All the way down. Cross press is on. 
He's got it. Bert Royal and Vic Faulkner fought together as the great Royal brothers. But Bert, in particular, had a successful solo career. We see him parading his skills against the surly Steve Logan here. No prizes for guessing whose side the fans are on. The crowd really loved the way that Logan was getting the worst of it at the end there. Royal coming back into it very well indeed. But this man is the man with the weight advantage, and he's showing it so far. One public warning against him, one forty gain in the third. Two rounds to go. Can he keep it up against this master craftsman in the opposite corner? Bert Royal, there he is. And quite cool and calm about the whole thing. He's still got time, I reckon. Seconds away, round five. Round five. Logan, light blue trucks. Leading, one four to nine. Walking with the drop kicks now, though. Three of them. And a fourth. All beauties, all landing right on the chin. And the follow-up for the crutch hold and slam. Reverse, double knee hold by Royal. Should have him, he's got him. And Burt Royal's equalizer came in exactly 26 seconds of round five. Logan never won prizes for popularity. Neither did his tag partner, Mick McManus. But together they were a formidable pair as Johnny Saint and Steve Best are about to find out the hard work. So just about uh, seven minutes plus to go as we go ahead any second. Seven to one, continue wrestling. Saint versus McManus still, and that looked very like a clench fest to Tony Mansulli as well. over the top for the shoulder press, not quite. Gets a count of one. Saint in the body scissors. Possible. Full Boston crab. That timekeeper's announcement, five minutes to go. And a quick tag as McManus gets Logan in to save him fast. But he's in no better state. And in comes Best now to complete the treatment on Logan. And back comes Johnny Saint. The elite now really delivering a few drop kicks on these two. A little too low, so that's better. Oh! Terrific forearm by Logan, right in the summit, and Saints dreaming at his partner to get up. Six, and of course it's going to be easy for Logan now, following down with that reverse top of knee hold. It must be easy with his weight. And yes, Saints best so disappointing for them They're doing so well but that now knee came dead right Steve Logan and Mick McManus yes as middleweight champion of Europe McManus enjoyed his reputation as the man they loved to hate and his battles against Jackie Palo pulled huge TV audiences notice Jean Ferret's name on that bill now known to American viewers as Andre the Giant Yes, Paolo was Mr. TV, and in this top-of-the-bill contest, took on a man, now one of our most respected referees, Ken Joyce. In those days, European welterweight champion. But which present-day referee is this? Well, see him in action, along with the one and only Ricky Starr. The irrepressible Les Kellett. And Billy Two Rivers will also be dishing it out right after this break.
Chief Thunderbird was the first Red Indian wrestler over here, though without any doubt, Billy Two Rivers is the one everyone remembers. With more chops than the average butcher, he could get out of trouble just when all seemed lost. And a full front, ooh. Face right over the top to the iron ring post. Very nearly, anyway, but he didn't quite touch it. Yearsley, all his own way at the moment, Johnny Yearsley, leading by one full vanilla over two rivers, trying to go in to make it a 2 0 win for himself. Oh, yes, the chop on the inside. Beautiful timing by Rivers. Beautiful. And going in for the second, but Yearsley was down before it arrived. And another one. Double handed chop, and uh, here we go. Yearsley's in trouble now. The equalizer should be coming up, if not the knockout. backhanding there's the tomahawk and I don't think we'll see Yearsley again today that landed well eight nine no chance so two rivers quite simply coming back with that beautiful couple of chops and leading to a tomahawk chop his favorite speciality move and with that tomahawk gets the KO in the fall Ladies and gentlemen, now it's Mr. Les Kellett versus Mr. Brian Glover, Shakespearean actor, alias Leon Arras of Barnsley. Max Ward is going to have real trouble with this next six rounds. Two falls to the side, but that's not it's going to worry in the pinfall counts. It's the fouls, the dodgy moves, the dodges, the trouble. Let's see what he says to these two fouls. I think his tongue was between his teeth then. Yes, it was. So they decided to release that, but still keeping the figure four on. <laughs> uh, 
full weight on it. Rope on his throat then. And Max Ward got a mouthful then. The eyeful rather. <laughs> None of us could see, uh, but the ref was just about on the side, pretty close. Ah, uh, you missed out on the B then. Now it's back to the deep dark ages of black and white television. Remember these opening titles? Wrestling used to go out twice weekly like that. And Jeff Kay was the present-day referee I asked you to identify. Here he takes on a formidable Mexican, Pancho Zapata. And as we join it, Jeff is shipping an awful lot of punishment. Doubtful as to what he's actually telling Kay, telling Zapata off for there. To see if we can find out exactly what George Wade's beef is. So it's not a question of being hit on the head, he doesn't like. Let two go there. It's just something that he does with the left hand, probably holding the hair while he does it. That Walks into that one. He's trying to get near. He's trying to get too near. Oh yes, lovely tackle there. And a cross press now by Zapata. He's got the extra weight, and he does it quite easily, following that session of weakening. Side head chance to be. A body check. He stopped too early though. Good drop kick. A nice one by Kay. But a little too far over. Folding press now. He hold the arms from going back. And there's the equalizer in the fifth round. And Ricky Starr was a one-off. And yours truly missing a show in the commentary box was similarly rare. So now a unique double with your man at the mic, my old friend, Peter Coburn. Good evening and welcome to the King's Hall Bellevue in Manchester. Professional wrestling tonight begins with Pietro Capello of Italy and Ricky Starr of America. Ricky Starr, who in fact is a ballet dancer, is wearing ballet shoes. a very popular wrestler and one of the greatest all-round artists in the world today. Capello shaking his fist at him.
Beautiful stomach throw, which Scar just flipped his way out of, drop kick. And the equalizing ball for Ricky Starr. Whipped into the post. Fellow, in fact, being as orthodox, he was trying for a body slam, but to be honest, Ricky Starr held on to the ropes. He He's disqualified Capello for that. He's disqualified Capello, and so the bout goes to Ricky Starr on disqualification. The referee disqualifies Capello. Yes, the referee quite rightly disqualified Capello. Thank you, thank you very much, but I don't need it that way. Right now, I'll give you two more rounds if you want. matchmaker is coming into the argument he's just our matchmaker who is George Melisco has entered the argument talking referee Capello wants to carry on so is Ricky Starr if they didn't let them continue you know the old saying always leave them wanting more and as for George Kidd lightweight champion of the world I always wanted more George held his world title for 20 years so sad that today we can't enjoy his ring skills. Or indeed that of men like Count Bartelli, Empire Heavyweight Champion, undefeated. Brian Maxine on the left there in his crown, still British middleweight champion. Judo Al Hayes, now busy commentating in the States. Big Ian Campbell, Mr. Scotland, for so long my co-commentator. Andy Robin, this time pictured without his bare Hercules, but alongside football's John Gregg and boxing's Ken Buchanan. Johnny Chesler from Krakow, Poland, a great character. What a sense of humor he had. Billy Robinson, champion of Great Britain for a long, long time. And Clayton Thompson, former middleweight champion of Great Britain and one of the finest wrestlers in this country. And of course, Max and Shirley Crabtree. Max, as you know, is a promoter with Dale Martin. And Shirley, the six foot two inch, 23 stone, ex Coldstream guardsman, who went on to greater things in the ring as Big Daddy. Which cues us pretty well into our roundup of present day heroes. Easy crutch hold. And what about a slam follow up? There it is. And maybe a splash. And Ivan will never get out of that one. That is it. Trying the posting, but switched it. And missed with that by a mile. Tony Saint waits for the double figure end along. Gets it. Oh, no. She doesn't know where it's coming from next. This is amazing. It really is marvelous to watch. And the folder over the side of the folding press. Nearly. Head there and the knee drop guillotine. We're just thinking seriously, but trying to demask Nagasaki already. And a cross press bridges. He's got it. First one. Caught it beautifully with a follow up drop kick from the posting. Beauty by Colin. He's only got about 10 seconds to go. Five, four, three, two, and it's too late. The bell will save Finley. What a tremendous spot, though. And he grabs the trunks this time. Not a superman sufficiently. Follows up with that cross press again. Grabs Steele's left leg, and Steele is so weak that he can't move. And Singh is so weak that he can't even get up. But he's won it and he retains the title two falls to one in round seven i don't know who gave the uh, name from al sanders superstar but i got a hunch it was one himself but he used to be really great the young potential nicely taken he's gone over the top 
and then is best double leg Nelson and Sanders is one down already. Oh, already the guillotine drop. This ambulance man from York, John Cox, in trouble. So ready, and he's busted up. Surely he's had an eight, count of eight already, and he's not going to get up from now. Almost shades of Jimmy breaks that pose. Oh, yes, the court gray on a worst day, folding press, and gray in trouble here. He's got it. The equalizer to McCoy. Incredible how these fellows come back from hospitalization so quickly and take this punishment. So they, oh yes, <laughs> lovely move by Danny. Grabs the leg for the cross press, and that's it. First ball to Collins, round three. Oh yes, nice try, as he got him, folding press, yeah, double A Nelson, folding press coming, there it is, and he's got the arms this time, Marty, must hold, he's got it. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting to you, the world and heavyweight champion, Martin. And so I'm afraid it's goodbye to all that, Grapple fans. And as I say, have a good time for the last time, I can't do better than to leave the final word to my good friend from Birmingham, the giant bomber himself, Big Pat Roach. I think today is a very, very sad day in history. That is the history of wrestling, which has been in our parlours for many, many years now. How many uh, years, Ken? 20? More than that. More than that. More than 20 years. And I feel that the wrestlers would like to say, collectively, I'm sure, Caswell Martin will endorse me here now today in the ring that we are very, very, very sad that in the near future we will now no longer be in your front parlour.